Welcome everyone to another episode of A Funny Taste. I, as always, am Kate Rosgen, and joining me today, I have comedian, actor, and writer, and self-proclaimed weirdo, Mr. Owen Garrett. Owen, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, hey, Kate. Thank you so much for having me. All right. What are we making today? We are making ramen. Yay. Oh, I'm so excited. I've never done this before. You seem to be a little bit more confident. This is a dish that you wanted to do. You make a lot of ramen. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I've been making ramen too much since, like, the college days. Like, those days, I thought, like, once you graduate in college, ramen was over. But, you know, being a bachelor, like, uh, you know, I'm 29 years old, and I've been a bachelor for 29 years. Um, so ramen is a staple of my diet at this point. Yeah. So, like, being a bachelor in a way kind of extends the college experience, I would say. Exactly, like I still, you know, I still don't know really how to dress myself as you can see by my Batman shirt. Um, I need the ladies touch. Thankfully though, I am, I did move in with a girl, a nice girl recently. So I still, I'm getting better, but I still know a few of my old tricks and uh, ramen's one of them. Nice, getting started. What's your first step? What do you got? So I think I'll probably start chopping uh, this green onion. Um, honestly, though, I'm not really sure. I mean, a green onion is the same as a scallion. That's, they're the same thing, right? Correct, yes. And if, um, yeah. And I think you can eat, like, most of this without, and still be fine. Yeah. So I'm going to chop up most of this. And uh, I know it's my recipe. I'm just, like, asking you for, like, is this a health hazard? Like, I should know this. I've eaten it plenty of times. Um, but I'm going to just slice and dice these onions first just because I think it'll probably take up the most amount of time All right. while I'm doing it. And you can, you know, I'll save some for, like, garnish at the top and then some for, like, just to mix in with all the stuff. Makes sense. So my first step in my recipe, because we're doing them a little bit differently, um, is to saute some onion and garlic. Ooh, and ginger. Um, so I'm going to do that in a pan, in a pot that I have set up here um, with a little bit of avocado oil. Ooh. So That's the move. That is. I have a little sesame oil in there as well because I was sauteing my tofu, which we'll get to in a minute. But uh, yeah, let's get started. Is there like, do you notice a difference between avocado oil and regular olive oil? When I'm cooking, not so much. If I'm eating it raw, like with a salad or something like that, I can actually taste the difference. But I just bought this at Costco, the finest purveyor of fine oils. And so it's just, it's an easier thing to grab and show off. Plus the recipe called for avocado oil. I don't know why, but we'll do it. I'm a little bit jealous of you because I bet it's going to smell really good when you're cooking like that garlic and onion. Garlic and onion is one of the best smells in existence. Like cooking garlic and onion. Throw some bell pepper in there. That's a really good smell. Ooh, yeah. Not for today though. No bell pepper. Ginger. I feel like every cooking show, like because of Hell's Kitchen, there's such a good, em there's such an emphasis on like having like good cutting technique. Like they always like zoom over their hands and like, oh, like, or they'll get caught, called out like it stinks. So I'm like a yeah. little bit worried with like my second camera, like pointed right at my hands. Like That's how I felt when I was doing an episode with Keith, the professional oh, yeah. chef. Yeah. Um, because he always gets on people about their like, he always makes fun of like people's cutting skills. And so I was very nervous. And I actually, before I cut in front of him, I was like, so show me exactly how I should be doing this on camera. It's like when I, like, I, like, I still always have to like look up a YouTube video on how to tie a tie if I ever have like a formal event. And it's kind of like this, where it's like right before the event, like it's such an important thing, like 
something you're expected to have already, but yeah. I'm approaching 30 and still wearing Batman shirts. You know. <laughs> and there's See, nothing wrong with a Batman shirt. I like this one, so thank you for saying that. <laughs> So at what age did you start cooking? You said your dad was a chef, right? Yeah, my dad was a chef. Um, he uh, he was, my dad was in the Coast Guard. He was on icebreakers and he was a cook on them. And then eventually he became like head of the whole culinary department of the entire Coast Guard. Um, while he did that, he like was also like working um, at like, good restaurants like he worked at the seattle or um the space needle in seattle wow. uh, the old ebbett grill in dc um he used to joke like he, he wanted to raise because um he was like my job's on the hat like because he manned the grill at the old ebbett grill so he oh. goes i need my my job's on the hat it's out there let's get a raise um but so I've always just observed that stuff when I go visit him. My mom's a great cook. My grandma's a fantastic cook. So, and that's my grandma on my mom's side. So it's like all over, there's great cooking. And like, I guess it started in college, just making stuff for myself, like in the dorms. And then after graduating, just, you know, um, in my like studio apartments or whatever, um, just making meals that are like quick and not much cleanup because in so many of these apartments like you don't have like a dishwasher or anything so like i wanted to do stuff that i could just like all throw in like one or two cans um so that's basically how like i developed into being like a good um cast iron skillet guy like mm -hmm. i love the cast iron yeah and, um that was one thing like I'd observed my dad cooking with, like cooking everything in it for years. Uh -huh. So like, I was like, how do I minimize dishes? How can I just cook all this stuff at once? And then I remembered like all the stuff he made in the cast iron. So I've just been kind of copying that cast iron stuff like since then. Nice. All right, I am going to add some dried shiitake mushrooms. Mm. Ingredient I've never used before. Do you have like a favorite dish that your dad cooked or cooks? Um, that's a tough one because there's like so many good ones. Like mm -hmm. he makes like an awesome like cheesesteak um, where he's got like a an Evo top grill in his backyard. He's got like this really cool backyard with like a smoker, deep fryer, grill, Evo grill, big green egg. So like there's so much variety. Like yeah. Some of this stuff will get reused into other things. Like my dad's super into barbecue. And mm -hmm. I know like talking to a vegan chef, but like he makes like amazing barbecue that's like smoked for like eight, 12, 25 hours. I don't know. Just out there all day. Yeah. Uh, it's great. And um, like a lot of that stuff will like get thrown into quesadillas or like breakfast burritos the next day. Nice. So it's really good and like reusable. So like, like a burrito with like last night's brisket in it, that's pretty bomb the next yeah. time. It almost becomes like, like the ability to do that, to take a dish and make other things out. It's almost like meal planning at a certain point yeah. where you can just do one thing and have one day with a bunch of stuff and then be able to live off of that for the rest of the week, but have like awesome different types of food with it. That's great. Oh yeah. And like, uh, my dad just went to visit me and my grandparents uh, in Michigan City, Indiana. I just got back from that trip and like my dad brought me like, he brought a separate, a separate suitcase just full of like frozen like brisket and chicken and all this stuff he made like, seriously like 40, 50 pounds of all this stuff that I've taken with me. Um, and like, that's going to be what I used to hibernate on for the rest of the year. Like, I'm going to munch on that and just pass out to like, next March or something. There you go. <laughs> All right, you look like you're ready for your next step. I'm just trying to decide, cause like, 
I think what I'm going to do next is, um, like, all these ingredients are just stuff, like, I just keep in my fridge. So this is definitely not authentic ramen. Like, my recipe, this is just, like, bachelor stuff, stuff that was, like, always in my cupboard. Just so happens to go good in ramen. So I think I'll crack open some peanuts and then, like, dice. I got a couple hard-boiled eggs, so I'll put, like, half an egg in the serving of my ramen. That, that, for me, like, really increases. Yes. Like, it makes it feel like a meal if there's an egg. Yeah. In the for me. I'm going to be doing that with tofu, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Gary, what are you doing at my house, dude? Oh, <laughs> I needed a place. What the hell is going on? I thought you, I didn't think you'd mind. I need to make some lunch. Is that Kate Rosen? I thought that that kitchen looked familiar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, <laughs> what are you guys making? Anything good? Oh, we're making the best damn ramen of all time. All right. It's going to be ready in like a half hour because I'm starving. It's going to, dude, ask me that again. It'll take like an hour. All right. I'll leave you to it. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> there's one real chef in this kitchen. All right, mine is now, uh, I'm ready to start adding my broth. Okay. So I was going to need to call in an adult to help me with this oven. But <laughs> Definitely should have cracked all these peanuts before we started filming. <laughs> So while you are shelling your peanuts, mm-hmm. I added my veggie broth. Now adding a tablespoon of this miso paste. And some soy sauce. Oh, nice. My recipe also calls for agave syrup or maple syrup i'm a little scared to do that yeah that's a bold ingredient so you really have to like be comfortable using it and know how much you want to put in i think i'm going to bring this to a boil and just taste the broth and see if i want it to be sweeter yeah i'm just scared (laughs) <laughs> don't be scared you're gonna master this this paste the master of the paste <laughs> I think I too am going to work on because all my stuff is dependent on like the hot water just keeping with it so mm-hmm. I'm gonna get all my stuff ready to put in before the hot water goes into it. Nice. The main ramen I got is like that cheap stuff. But I'm going to add to the broth a little packet that comes to it. A little chicken stock. That's my stock. And then I should probably take this time to admit that I don't have actual ramen noodles. Went to two different grocery stores and the closest I could get are these somen noodles. Those are pretty good though. I I saw them and they're apparently the closest you can get to ramen. Um, so we'll see. It'll be a little bit fake, but um, hopefully it'll still taste good. Yeah, it's got to be hard to find like grocery store in the valley that has vegan ramen noodles. That's tall order, but I mean, I got the miso paste, I got seaweed, yeah. I got so much other stuff, but for some reason the ramen noodles. It is made out of uh, wheat flour, so it's like the same ingredients. It's just maybe a little bit thinner. I don't know. I'm going to not be a diva about it and just take what I got. While I bring this to a boil. So I also have green onion, but I do it the cheater way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wanted the street cred. I wanted people to see my motion. It's like forward and back, you know. I get it. I get it. I really. That's why I angled it right at my hands. Just so everyone could see. <laughs> my main thing I'm going to add to this, like the 
stock that comes with it, I'm just going to add a bunch of chili powder to basically like, it's just like chicken flavored chili powder at a certain point. But. Yeah. So you're doing a spicy rum. Yeah. Oh, it's too spicy, but we'll see. But uh, it might be a little spicy. A, lot, a big, a lot of powder is fell through. So I am a, a non-spicy fan, so mine will be a non-spicy rum. I adore spice. Like I need, I feel like everything should be spicy. I just love spicy food so much. I I wish that I enjoyed it more. I wish I could handle it. Is the thing because I've done the mistake too many times of ordering food and not asking if it's spicy and assuming it can't be that spicy. And then it's inedible to me. I just can't oh, yeah. handle it. So especially with vegan food, for some reason, I feel like prepared vegan food, they always want to make spicy. Really? Like that, yeah. Oh, you don't eat meat. You must want your mouth on fire. I don't get the correlation there, but um, apparently it's very popular with a lot of vegan food. Yeah, know. maybe they're just trying to overcompensate for like a lack of flavor at some place. <laughs> add some garlic, use the old bachelor spoon right here. <laughs> Gonna eyeball it for an accurate measurement. Yeah. I like this stuff, so I'm probably using way too much, but I don't know. It works for me, so. Okay, now I'm going to reduce the heat to low because that's what it says. Cover and let simmer for 10 minutes. Oh, nice. So, got this fancy guy. Bam. Sweet. All right. That's going to make my broth taste all uh, ramen-y. All ramen-y. Rum, rum, yeah. rum, ramonious? I don't. We are hard rum. Ramenonian? I don't know. <laughs> Ramenicious. Ramen lit rum. We got it. Whatever it is, it's going to be the episode title. Yeah. Once you learn how to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. So the package says this stuff, the ramen takes three minutes to boil. If I put in four packages, does that mean it take, does it take 12 minutes? Or like, it can't take 12 minutes to boil this cheap ramen that I got. No, I think, I think it should just take the same amount of time. It, it takes three minutes. Whether you make one yeah. or four of these things at once. Yeah. You just definitely need to up the amount of water you're putting them in. <laughs> so much water. You good thing I started boiling them like 20 minutes ago. I did not keep track of what I just dropped. <laughs> it's all those peanuts you had to shell. I know. <laughs> Just like in a daze. And I got some other stuff to do. Have you uh, learned any new recipes in the pandemic or were you? I felt prepared, like as yeah. someone that knows how to cook. I know a lot of people were freaking out about, you know, not being able to feed themselves if they couldn't go to restaurants, but felt very, uh, well prepared and able to do this and and you know able to make my own meals mm -hmm. but i did learn a lot of new dishes is there anything that you learned yeah i just experimented more with my uh like cast iron mm -hmm. like I, I did a cooking battle with my buddy john taylor where we did like a philly cheesesteak battle so like i did like all these like hot peppers in um uh, to substitute like traditional like bell peppers, cooked uh -huh. all the cast iron, threw the cheese on there, and then like um I like fried the bread in it and like paint it, like got a paint, like one of those paint brushes and painted like butter and garlic on it. That was fun. I gained like 70 pounds after that meal. Uh -huh. um, well worth it. Um did some like other I did like surf and turf, like with some lobster. That was a wow. lot of fun. Um but I'm just a creature of habit mostly, just doing the same stuff over and over. Yeah. Just chopping up some uh, keys leftover pork. Uh, <laughs> like another man's pork, but uh, 
Like that's totally like fitting the bachelor theme. It's just like ooh, like yesterday's leftovers being like main ingredient. <laughs> Goodness. So that's pretty much good to go. Um let me just do this. Just having my hard boiled eggs. All right. I am going to, it's been 10 minutes, so I'm going to move the lid. Now I'm gonna strain this stuff out of here. Put the mushrooms back, but big hunks of garlic and a ginger. Ooh, yeah. Are not welcome in the ramen. No. No big chunks. Garlic out. I might get this video like flagged on YouTube for like the crime I'm committing on this ramen. <laughs> Crimes against ramen. Yeah, people are gonna be pissed. Rightfully so. Okay, something I've learned today, ginger sinks. Ginger sinks, okay. Garlic floats, ginger sinks. <laughs> All on the bottom here. Oh yeah, getting jalapeno seeds everywhere. I chopped up my mushrooms, throw them back in here. And then finally get to add the noodles. Oh. I'm gonna do a quick taste of my very hot broth. Make sure I don't feel like adding agave syrup to it. Oh no, that's perfect. All right, I'm gonna put my heat back up to medium. Add in my noodles. I don't know how many noodles, noodles I'm supposed to add into this, so I'm just doing a bunch. Okay. Yeah. Looks to be that's a good amount. Right? Looks like the right amount, definitely. All right. We need to see if I can find this. Throw in some green onion. Cheater way. Yes, yeah, so but mine's basically done. This is the final presentation. Let me see. Let's get that camera. Oh my God. It's the opposite <laughs> of where you want to go. Ooh, that looks good. Yeah. So I added in half a hard boiled egg, some diced jalapeno, and um, some of those leftover green onions um, just to garnish it. The garnish. How is it? Yeah, it's not too bad. Probably added a little bit too much broth there at the end because mm -hmm. I added, made it a little bit watery compared to what it probably would have been if I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Thought it might be really spicy, but it's not too bad at all. The nice thing is you can always kind of tweak it at this point too if you wanted to add a little bit more of something. Yeah. Yeah, squeezed in the limes, which are good. Um, and I've got this whole jalapeno over here just looking me in the eye, challenging me. <laughs> it heard you say it wasn't that spicy, and it's... Yeah, it's actually not spicy at all. 
Also adding in cubed tofu. Woo! My version of a hard boiled egg. Nice. Give it that like hearty, you know, feeling afterwards. Yeah. Soup doesn't really feel like a full meal unless there's something else kind of. Yeah. Like yeah. you need something, potatoes, some kind of big. Yeah. I actually really like, um, it's a good vegan hack. If you have a soup that's not very hearty, um, I pour it over quinoa, which is a complete protein for all of you vegans out there. Or rice would be fine, but I like quinoa just because of the extra protein, but makes it feel like more of a meal. Yeah. Oh my God, this is so pretty. Well, I, I forgot like to add cilantro, so I'm gonna rip some off and just throw it on the top. There you go. Oh, whoops. Forgot about my bok choy. So I'm gonna put some of this here. Oh, you can't forget that bok choy. Oh yeah, that grilled bok choy. And I got some grilled tofu pieces. Gonna stick those in there. I even went and bought some uh, seaweed. Ooh. Toasted sesame seaweed pieces. I've just been horsing down this food right here. <laughs> down my face and on my chest. All right, let's see. I need this is good. Hey, look how good this is. What do I, what, where's mine? This <laughs> This yeah, this whole part. pot. Did you, dude, you have to eat this whole pot. Like the whole thing, right? It's like a competition. Yes, now it is. What's my time limit? Uh, never. You can take as long as you need. Look at that, though. That's a garnish. The garnish is taking like 15 minutes, so. In a peanut gallery, you're getting pretty loud. It's already cold, though. Hold on. See, look at that. Now you can, then you get these other ones, too, that you can add in there. Okay, you done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's good stuff at the bottom. It's like a gallon. <laughs> I'll taste it. Woo -wee! Is it uh is it vegan? Yeah. The pork <laughs> in the fried <laughs> egg, the boiled egg and the mm -hmm. pork. I mean the broth and everything. Did you put anything? It's chicken broth. It's the God. Kate, why do you let them on your shelf? <laughs> You use chicken broth too. Mm -hmm. Did I? In our stuff? Okay. Here. Here's mine. There we go. All right. See you guys. All right. Now we can actually start recording. Ooh, look at that. Now that's a meal. That actually looks really good. Tofu, bok choy, some seaweed, bean sprouts, green onion. So I got grilled tofu and soft tofu. I'm very excited for this. That looks excellent. Thank you. That looks really good. Yeah. I'm, like, can you email me like one of those or something? I don't know how you can send it. <laughs> just do a drive by. I'll just check one in your car. Yeah. Yeah, mine's like, okay. Mine's fine. That looks bomb, though. Yours <laughs> great. Okay, that's good. Like I would, I'd get pissed if I saw this at a restaurant, but yours, like I would happily order that. You do that thing where you order yours and then you see mine come to the table and you're like, oh shit, I should have ordered mine. I think yours looks good though with the jalapeno and stuff. It looks good. Like I dressed it up. I dolled it up. It's is okay. This, is this the, uh, is this the episode where the food didn't come out? Is that... Are you saying this is a a first? No, 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 no way. Not even. Oh, wow. like, how is it? It's really good. I'm gonna try some with the tofu. I like the bean sprouts. They were just like at the grocery store. That was a good call. Was that sort of just a uh, like spur of the moment pickup? Yeah, for sure. I found the baby bok choy, and it was right next to it. That uh, like that second camera, like above your uh, ramen, uh -huh. I can 
a hipster like phone wallpaper or something. <laughs> With like the time right here. Yeah, exactly. 3.50, yep. Maybe I'll put that in in post. Oh my God. The only problem with ramen is it's difficult to eat because there's so many things going on. Mm -hmm. You need like chopsticks with a spoon attached, if that makes you, sense. Yeah, you need that, that dual combo, like the chopsticks, that big spoon. Yeah. And then also like the ability not to care about like having juice all over your face. <laughs> so yeah, the chopsticks with the spoon would be like an Asian spork, like an Asian version of a yeah. spork or something. They need to see those at KFC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely a reason I didn't wear a white shirt on this episode. Like it was just... dark clothing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not like a, not a great first date food, you know? Oh, no. This is like, when it's someone who doesn't know how to cook, it's like turn to make a meal. Like, this is like to do one of your go-to's. <laughs> it's good enough, and it looks like you tried. That's how. <laughs> yeah. It's got a lot of different components to it. Mm -hmm. So if you're, let's say you're a, Owen Garrett, famous stand-up comic doing tours all over the country. What's on your rider food-wise? What do you want backstage? Oh, man. I don't, that's like one of those things where I may just have to outright reject it. If I was able to get whatever I wanted, it'd be like, there'd pretty much always be tacos. It'd be tacos, wings, or gyros, like every time. Mm. But if I got to that point where I could have all of them, there would definitely be wings tacos at every single one like especially like two in a green room you want that good hearty finger food mm -hmm. so like authentic tacos like you know you think you might just have two of them you end up having like nine before yeah. you get home like that's what i'd probably put on my rider ice cream too Ooh. you know i'm a big ice cream guy what kind i love like sherbet um like italian ice like i love all ice cream but like especially like sherbet italian ice um i love daiquiri ice from baskin robbins that might be like my favorite ice cream ever i can't stop eating this this is so good are you gonna add it to your uh, rotation i think i might have to it's such a solid like i really like making soups I know it's summertime and it's warm, but still, like, it's one of those things that I really like the aspect of being able to make it once and have it all week. Mm -hmm. And I think the, also the great thing about the ramen is, like, you can top it with different stuff. Like, if I wanted to make this spicy, I could absolutely still do that. I could still throw yeah. something in it to make it spicier or. Um, yeah, I think you could, or, like, keep the broth for like a week and then like you might have to make noodles like before but that take that's really quick just let them get soft three minutes yeah we learned that today <laughs> yeah, we worked it out together yes we did we figured it out the power of dual clear glasses came together to find <laughs> out how many ramens or how many minutes it take to boil a couple of yeah. ramen. two four eyes figured out the math <laughs> of three just equaling three, no matter how many noodles you put. Do you feel like with clear glasses, people expect like a little bit more from you? Like you should just know more stuff. No, I feel like with clear glasses, more people ask me if they're real. Oh yeah, I get that. Yeah. Those plastic, stuff like that. Yep. I feel like with mine, people like expect me to be able to like hook up their DVD player. <laughs> I'm having trouble with my Wi-Fi. Uh, you have clear glasses. Can you? Everyone assumes I know every Wi-Fi password that ever <laughs> existed. Like, <laughs> no matter where I'm at, I'm just like lock it up. In, I'm like hooking up into their network. Yeah. Like, all, like no matter where I'm at, like what's the Wi-Fi? You do kind of have that look of if you were cast in like a heist movie, you would be the guy at the computer. Like, 
Yeah. And then all the security cameras and making sure that everything's going. Down. Yeah. Well, that's what they do, like Ocean's Eleven, all those things. It's like the main stars are the cool guys with the abs that eat junk food and like walk away with the actual briefcase of like the millions of dollars. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's like, they always have like some like kind of unknown slubby comedian, be like the tech guy who like, <laughs> With, like you don't really see him on camera but like every once in a while he'll do like a one-liner or like make fun of like what's going on like yeah. the, the hairy situation in there that was close yeah exactly that's perfect well i mean in the in the uh oceans eight did you see that one the old lady one i didn't see that one yet you would have been rihanna okay so Ooh, i'll take it take that yeah yeah. Rihanna was the tech girl. She was great. All right. Putting that work, work, work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Owen Garrett, I have one final question for you. It does relate to comedy, kind of to food. Um, if you could describe your comedy style and you could make a ramen that had different components of all the different things that go into your comedy, what would be the flavor of your comedy ramen? Oh man, it would probably just be some kind of just random assortment of like ingredients. Just ba So basically what I made earlier, because <laughs> I've grown up all over the world, all over the country. Like I was born in Seattle, raised outside of Chicago, lived all over different cities. So that's like kind of your broth. I'm into like stand up. That's the that's the pork. You know, I, I enjoy hobby jiu jitsu where these middle aged guys just kick my ass on um, like Wednesday mornings. Like that's the, you know the little bit of line of kucho mon. So I'm making like all these random interests and things, making it somewhat of a cohesive meal. But it's not one that you find in the cookbook. It's just the stuff that's laying around the house that just throw it all in one thing and just hey it came out you know it's okay it didn't die yet so it can't be that bad <laughs> yeah as long as it doesn't make you sick then I guess it was a successful meal at that point but you know if it does make you sick you'll always remember it so maybe you know it's not that <laughs> bad I mean what what's who's to say what's good is it something you like or is it something that you remember so maybe Mm. I want people to like it and then get sick because then they remember something they like. Now they hate it. I don't know. <laughs> They're sick of it, but then they realize they liked it. Maybe the sickness made them like lose a couple pounds, so they're coming back for more. They yeah, like, it. they wait like nine months in between like having that meal, but they you know trick themselves. No, no, I really like it. I just got sick that one time, but I'm gonna try it again. And this time, it's gonna be good the way I imagined it would be. <laughs> I think that's, uh, you know, you'll go far with that. I think that's a yeah. good, good strategy. <laughs> All right. So um, I want to give you an opportunity to let everyone know how to find you, how to follow you, where to see you do stand up, all that kind of stuff. Awesome. Well, I am working at the Comedy Chateau, uh, new comedy club in uh, North Hollywood, right across from the Toyota dealership. So come out, see me. Uh, and my girlfriend Becca, we both work there and perform. Uh, just both going on new faces shows and whatever, whatever's going on in between dropping off French fries. Um, um, and I'm also doing a show uh, on the fifth, August fifth at the Federal with the Liar Guys. And um, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have a comedy career. Uh, <laughs> but if you want to find me, look me up on social media. Uh, my handle is at Owen P. Garrett. Uh, so that's where you'll find me on Instagram. I never use Twitter, but if people follow me there, I do it. So. And Facebook, if you type in facebook.com slash the period original period gangsta, like not gangster, but gangsta, facebook.com slash the original gangsta, that, that uh, takes you to my profile. So Wow. I, you have to save that URL in 10th grade. So yeah, I was going to say that. Was really I'm never giving that up. 
you're the only one still plugging Facebook, but it's only because you got that. <laughs> yeah. I wish it'd come back because I, I mean, that's the coolest thing ever. Like I've had that since, you know, what, like 2008 or nine, like <laughs> it'll come back, baby. It'll circle back around. It's like, uh, you know, high waisted jeans. <laughs> exactly. They're coming yeah. back to Facebook. That's, I mean, all those middle-aged hipsters, I mean, their photos of their mom deems go on Facebook. So look yeah. me up and post it. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and making ramen with me and showing me how to do it a bachelor way. Um, all right. I think that that's pretty much it. Um, thank yeah. you so much. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. You're very welcome. I'm so excited to have ramen for the rest of the week now. I'm going to turn off the camera and finish this entire bowl. All righty. All right. We'll say hi to Keith in his kitchen. And thank you, Keith. Yeah. Thanks, Keith. I hope he's uh, not able to listen. But yeah. He's getting sick from the ramen right now. Yeah, but... he's getting sick. <laughs> All right, everybody. Tune in next time. See ya.